Hello and welcome to my Northern Virginia studios. Back there, if we didn't have the leaves on the trees, you'd be able to see Gaithersburg, Maryland. So I thought I would come in this entrance where my students arrive and show you what I have going on. I'm inspired by a video that my friend Lori Silvagi just did of her studio space. Mine is in the basement of our home. Hers is actually on the main floor. My space isn't quite as pretty as hers, but it is functional. And if you want to look up her studio space, it's S-Z-Y-L-V-A-G-I. This is where I am doing currently doing my work on the Ani Art Academy Language of Drawing. I normally have the uh, cylinders set up here over to the left, but I had to move that set up temporarily. Um, I have a student that is learning to copy master paintings, and she is working here. This painting is almost finished. She just has to do the cleanup phase of it. And I'm really proud she did that in just four one hour sessions. And then I've got space here for another student. We're starting another project. And this space is where in the past I've held workshops and I can fit up to 15 people in this space. That's a little tight. Six to 10 is pretty comfortable. So sometimes if we have a lot of students we will overflow into the area back here, there are a couple of rooms. We also have in here a bunch of miniature um, frames. I don't know if you guys have ever painted in miniature or thought about it, but they don't like to get down below three inches because you have to create these manually. And I use frankenframes.com for my work and I've sent unfortunately a couple of people to the emergency room without fingers because um, it is tough to make those frames that little. I also have a frame collection that is boxes. They are cigar boxes and decorative book boxes. And I'm working on a series of paintings that will go inside these boxes for the Woolly Fox, which is a new retail boutique in Middleburg, Virginia, that has asked to show my work. And I said, yes. So these are the underpaintings for those pieces. And as you can see, I have quite the setup here. I like to work on a parallel palette. So right there where you see that uh, gorilla box, I like to put my um, palette in there just like, you know, someone else will put a painting in there. And that way, when I light up my lighted magnifiers, sometimes it takes two, <laughs> the palette is essentially the same light as the painting. And so I don't have to mix my values, making an accommodation for a difference in value between my paint on the palette and my paint on my surface. So, and this is, okay, part of my brush collection. These are the brushes I'm currently using. Those are the paints I'm currently using in these drawers here, in this unit that my son made for me, are a bunch of other paints. <laughs> so yeah, I probably have a paint collection problem, but even worse than that, I probably have a brush collection problem because here's my other stash of brushes. So now you know all my dirty laundry. Um, over here also, I like to use, as you can see, this easel that I can stand up. I can adjust it so I can stand or I can sit. Lately I've been sitting and I put these pieces of foam core uh, under my paintings to just sort of get them at the level that I want so I don't have to be moving this up and down all the time. Over here, if I'm working from life, I have a little box that I just set up with very basic with foam core. And here are some pieces that I did just this past weekend at the Anthony Weichels' studio in Ani Art Academies in um, uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And over here are a bunch of small still life props that I have. These small items fit into these little baskets that are kind of loosely grouped by uh, what, what they are. And um, they will look much bigger in my paintings by the time I'm done with them. <laughs> So I've got lots of little figurines and things like that in there. And of course, I have lots of references, reference magazines laying around too. These are all of my sort of um, supplies for workshops that I teach or just different scenarios that I found myself doing demos in, that kind of thing. So I've got lots of lights and extra panels. These um, uh, cradle panels are nice if you just want to do a demo and then gift somebody or, or sell it on the spot. A couple more little um, 
I've got a friend wall upstairs by my coffee maker. And this is also a friend wall. Some of these, these two of my children and the self portrait I painted, but the rest are from amazing artists who I've been very fortunate to call friend. And this is the space that I do all my business stuff at. This is where I do my zoom calls at right now. I'm copying a bunch of things to try and um, have flash drives of a bunch of photo shoots that I did. Why that takes forever to do. And just my, uh, business things like my uh, copies of my painting or uh, uh, FedEx and U USPS things that are being in delivery in transit. And I have these binders where I keep what I call my wrap sheets. And I have one for all the paintings I have in inventory. And in the back of it is what shows they're, the sheets with what shows they're at if they're all, all, all not here. And then I've also got one of sold pieces. And then I have one that is all of the galleries that I'm in, all the paintings that I keep my inventory um, organized for that. And now I will take you down to the other deeper, darker basement looking spaces. This is the first drawing I ever did. I was 16 years old and I see so many mistakes in it, but it's there to keep me, to remind me of where I've been. And then around the corner, this uh, print of an etching by Julian, this is where I want to go. So <laughs> I've got the, the contrast. Um, through here, this is where I have a whole bunch of frames. They're larger and those were gifted to me by Huckleberry Fine Art Gallery when the owner retired. Boots Harris was kind enough to give me those frames. And then I've got a bunch of boxes that are, you know, in various states of, uh, reuse <laughs> that are going off to different, we well, have two traveling exhibitions that I do with. WAM and APS, Artist Painting Stories and Women Artist Masters. And we are all over the country, actually all over the world with our shows. More frames. Do I have a frame collection problem? Possibly. This is my table that I do all my framing and uh, packing for shipping work on and all my little supplies with Z clips and my guns and tapes and all that good stuff. My FedEx uh, label holders and all that and a bunch of book boxes that I have up here. And then in this area here, I have my setup for photography. Now this doesn't work for everything. It seems like every time I put something in here, if it's little enough to fit into here, you would think that I could just flick on the light and take the picture and it would be good. No, I always have to do adjustments. So you see where I've got for some things, depending on to keep the glare off, I got to do. So, you know, some things I can scan, but I don't do that much just because I usually like to frame them and then take pictures of them in their frames. Um, so that's my setup for my camera for my photography. There's my camera. I have a Canon and I really just put it on manual and, um, do just the basic, you know, get the light right and off I go. And then my still life props, you can see, I have a whole plethora of just things. My husband likes to laugh at me and one mistake I did make is I've got this much deeper than it should be probably because I got to peek over to see what's actually in there in the back. The back things oftentimes get just ignored. And then I've also got more still life props over here. Got a dress form in the corner over there that my son gave me. So I'm just overflowing with amazing things that I want to paint. And this isn't the end of it. I have some that I use upstairs as, you know, decor in our house. And I tend to forget about those too, because I'm just so used to walking past them. I also have this beautiful space here that I use for, um, when I'm cutting panels. And I know my friend Natalie Featherstone calls this a sewing machine with teeth, but it, uh, the scroll saw I've had it since I was doing projects back when we lived in New Hampshire in the eighties. And I was doing, um, houses that I cut out of wood. And I just love having the extra space here for, uh, staging things and sanding things. And, um, I don't know, I kind of like to get a little crafty sometimes, I guess, but for cutting my panels down, that's what I use. You can put blocks in to make sure that you get your lines straight. I'd rather use that than a table saw just because I'm afraid if I use the table saw, I'll cut my fingers off. That's likely to happen in my world. I have a bunch of packing materials that are overflowing my space there. More boxes, as you can see, these, um, mirror boxes that I have, you, I stack them inside each other 
and then put them inside a bigger box sometimes to ship because you can't just ship in them. But if you get a bigger box, then you can plop them in there and you're good to go. So anyway, that is my studio. And I have this hanging system on this wall and a bunch of walls upstairs as well, where the staff's hanging system, where typically I'll, it'll be filled with paintings. But right now, they're off at shows working for me. So they'll come back and it'll be full again. And then they'll go away and it'll be empty again. This is the way it works for me. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my studio space. And I hope whatever your happy place is, you're um, enjoying it today too.